Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guides channel. How you all been doing? Yes, I know I haven't been around at this moment in time. I haven't been around for quite a while. I am sorry about that. I am going to be doing some more videos. I am trying to find a way to be able to do some more live interviews and some more interesting people to have on the channel to be able to talk about different beliefs and so on and so forth. But let's get into the video. I'm just sure you've already read the title of how a... Alabama mayor has decided to say and delete comments on a Facebook post about how he wants to have a revolution and how that he thinks in this revolution that homosexuals, transgender, as he says, transvestites, and people that want some form of abortions, doesn't specify what term or terminology he wants for them, should all be killed in this revolution because it's the only way to be able to stop them now. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into this video and let's see what happens, shall we? So let's start off from the 4th of June when this actually happened, when this story was originally broke, when Mark Chambers was talking on Facebook, I believe, and was able to go through and make certain posts. Now we're going to go through the posts and then I want to go on to the reasons why I've actually picked up this story and think it's very important. So forgetting the title and let's go down to the actual quotations and where this actually happened. So the post that Mark Chambers has wrote on his social media account was, We live in a society where homosexuals lecture us on morals, transvestites lecture us on human biology, and baby killers lecture us on human rights and socialists lecture us on economics. Now, I don't understand how it matters if a homosexual or gay or lesbian person is lecturing you on the idea of morality I don't see how that has anything to do with the idea of morality on who you have sex with in a consensual adult relationship there's obviously differences if there are other aspects to that but if it's a case of it being two adults that are in a consensual relationship how does that affect any morals apart from if you have particular faiths I don't mean a faith, though I could be pacific and try and find out what faith Mark Chambers has. But, most importantly, let's generalise for this instance rather than spec specify, which is that faiths themselves would condemn homosexuality and say that it is immoral or an abomination on the planet. So, that would also state that he has a predisposition of what his morals would be. Now... Let's leave that aside, for instance. Let's go on to the use of transvestites. Now, you could say that he's not PC and from a different time. Maybe that's true. Maybe that is true. I'm not going to go down that avenue. I'm not that guy. I can't put my own ideas into what he actually meant. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. But I can say that himself, that I believe that he means more to the idea of transgender people trying to lecture us on biology. Now, me personally, I disagree with the way in which the people that have gender dysphoria or are transgender are going about in a way in which that they are trying to, in my opinion, though I could be wrong, are trying to conflate the idea of biology with the idea of identity. Now, I have no problem whatsoever in the idea of somebody else wanting to identify as something else. No problem whatsoever, long as it doesn't hurt or goes against any laws. I do not care. That's completely up to them. Now, baby killers themselves, touchy subject, going on to abortion, everything else like that. Most people already know that I am more of a pro-lifer position. 
But I also understand that there are definitely circumstances in which abortion should be regularly available to different peoples. But those are my positions and my caveats onto it. But does that mean that I see everybody that has gone off of their way to actually be baby killers for it? Now, if I wanted to be hyperbolic and agree with that, I could do. I could agree with it and say, yeah, well, they're definitely baby killers. It depends on when you think that the idea and point of conception of life is. It also depends on if you think that the point of abortion is to kill the baby or whether it's because they don't perceive it as a baby just yet. Unfortunately, when it comes down to abortion, I think that the whole topic and argument is very convoluted in moral ambiguity. The idea of you want this because of that or you want this because of this. Rather than actually listening to the other people's points of view, I think this comes from the idea of both pro-choice and pro-life. I think people generally talk past each other when it comes to this issue. As I said, I have my issues, I have my points. You can feel free to talk to me about them in the comment section down below. But I don't think that people should be bloody murdered or have recompense because of that ideology. And socialists lecturing us on economics. Again... I disagree with the ideological premise that socialists can't lecture us on their idea of economics. After all, whether you agree with the practice or not, it is an economical structure. Just saying it is an economical structure. Now, I disagree with it, most of it. There are certain aspects where I believe that socialization does work. Do I believe in socialism? No. But it is an economic standing, so they do have, should we say, a horse in the race, so to speak. But anyway, just to say in general that these people, all apart from homosexuals, all have ideologies that they are willing to debate and have a chat over and talk about. Obviously, the difference with homosexuals is that it's a lifestyle. It's not a preference. It's an orientation. So it's a case of they cannot do anything about that anyway. That's the way that they are regardless. And you cannot force them and should not force them to change. Other ideologies you can have a talk and dialogue about. Obviously. Now there are different people that would disagree so on and so forth. But you can talk about it rationally. Not, not doing what Mr Chambers has decided to do. Which is... By giving the minority more rights than the majority. Now, apart from overreacting, I don't actually see where more rights are actually given to the minorities. Now, you could say affirmative action. You could say certain things. But I, I don't see it as more rights. I see it as more as a focusing on aspects of rights that are already given. Now... Again, I know that that's going to be controversial and I know a lot of people are going to moan at me in the comment section down below by saying, oh, they do have more rights, they do do this, they do do that. Let's say that they do. Let's say that they are being given more rights than the majority at this moment in time. Let's say that they are. Let's carry on and listen to what Mr. Chambers has decided to continue with, shall we? I hate to think of the country my grandkids will live in unless... Somehow we change and I think that will take a revolution. Interesting. That's not from Mr. Mark Chambers. That's not from Mr. Mark Chambers. That's a response to Mark Chambers. So now Mark Chambers will now respond to this comment which he now says from the point of revolution, the only way to change it, the idea of homosexuals, transvestites as he says, and baby killers and socialists from being able to have their points of view put into place, regardless of whether you agree with them being wrong or right, or whether they should or shouldn't, that he wants to kill the problem out. And by that, he means killing them. Because he even goes on to say that. I know it's bad to say. But without killing them. 
Now, people might argue that it's bad word choicing or word play or he wasn't really thinking of the context of how the words were going to be used. But he could have used the word it. Or ideology. But the way that he said them after purposely listing groups of people that are doing certain things that he disagrees with that's what he means by there's no other way of fixing it. And I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that massively. If we're going to suggest that if people that I disagree with are going to be shot, killed, murdered in whatever way that this person perceives that they want to go and kill them in any humane way in which they say is going to happen somehow, then that's okay. And I personally don't see that as ever going to be okay. Why does it work for that instance? Let's do a thought experiment very, very quickly while this is up. Let's say everybody agrees with you that homosexuals, transvestites, as he says, and uh, socialists and baby killers of people who support abortion should all be killed. Right? Let's, let's, let's say that that is correct for this hypothetical. Let's just say that. I don't agree, but let's say it. What happens when it then gets expanded to say, I don't know, if it's not a case of a full and capitalistic or anarcho-capitalistic points that are now taken up or anybody who supports government is now a socialist? What happens when that is then the people that then get killed? I don't think that anybody should be killed for their political ideologies. As long as it's only an idea. Now, if they start implementing that idea or even have it into the actual proceeds of going to, as in attempting the ideology, then yeah, that's a crime and potential crime and should be arrested and punished by those aspects of law that we have in place already. But not just because of the ideology behind it. I don't see that. I don't understand why anybody would want to do that. Because if it goes to one ideology, it will expand and be used against you eventually. But those are just my opinions. And yes, people would say, oh, slippery slope. Fine. Whatever. Let's just go on to the actual point of what I am meaning for. And let's transition into the actual point of the reasons why I don't want this to happen. And why I have picked up this story. Because there's so many other ways that I could have gone. And there's so many other stories that I could have done. But the reason why I want to do this story and why it's so important is because that he is coming up for a re-election. So the mayor that has suggested that the only way to stop people that are homosexuals, that are transvestites, that have different political ideologies or moralistic ideologies or standings to him should be killed and He's now planning on a re-election for mayor. Now, don't get me wrong. You can say what you want. Even in a public office. You can say what you want. I'm not saying that I think that he should be restricted on him being able to say anything that he wants. Not against his free speech. Say what you want. There are ramifications, though, for what you say. And if you're in a public office and... You are suggesting that parts of your electorate, whatever and how much that you think the electorate are and is, should be killed. Personally, don't really think that you should actually be running for office if you're going to run for office on the idea of possibly, not saying he will do, but possibly go out of your way to believe of killing certain peoples and their ideologies because you disagree with them. That, that's why I think this is very important and why the story actually needs more traction. And why people that are on the right, and I put myself into this position as well, I am right-leaning, I do think that we should be pointing out people like this and saying, yes, he has every right to be able to say that, but the ramifications for him saying that should be that he should not be and have the chance to be elected on that statement, especially considering how close it was to the re-election. Remember, only being a month away. I don't see why he should be allowed to be re-elected. 
Now, some people will disagree and say, well, it's up to your electorate to decide, and maybe you're correct. I'm only going on my own personal opinion. I'm not saying that I want laws put into place. I'm just trying to ask the questions on why, and why the Democrat, sorry, not the Democrats, I'm so used to saying that in general, but why the Republicans would actually endorse the rerunning of this person, because him himself could rerun by himself as an independent. Fair enough, but you could argue different points and semantics on that aspect. But he's not running as an independent to become a mayor. He's actually running under the ticket of the Republicans, which means that the Republicans endorse him. I have a problem with that, and I'm not American, and I know that I'm English, and I don't really have any right on talking about American politics. But you know what? I'm going to. You know why? Because I want to. So with that little caveat thrown in and put in there, I don't understand why the Republicans are supporting him. Surely if they want to be a case of proving all of these haters wrong and all these Democrats that are supposed to be all the crazy left that are pointing out that, oh, we have, or they have, should I say, people that are homophobic, transphobic, people that just want to kill people and are authoritarianisms, or is, is they're authoritarianists. Basically, they like, want to tell people what to do. Authoritarian. Can't speak apparently. Do you know exactly what I'm trying to say? The authoritarianisms of these people are just not pointing out the hypocrisies. They're just pointing out the actual fact that what the crazy left apparently are saying is correct. That the Republicans are endorsing homophobes. They are endorsing the idea of people that are transphobes. That these people are moral abominations, according to this Mark Chambers. And that's where I have the problem. That if you're going to endorse these types of people, you can no longer then as a Republican say that, well, the Republicans themselves would never endorse these types of people. They're endorsing one. So where do you go from there? If he's running under their ticket of a Republican... They're endorsing him and his views. But those are just my opinions. Let me know down in the comment section down below what you actually think about all of this. Do you think that I'm overreacting? Do you think that I'm projecting too much? Do you think it's a case of I've turned to the loony left in, the, in myself in this? Or do you think it's correct that if we're going to try and defend the side to say that they are not the things that some people would call these things. That when it does happen, regardless of if it's only in a small minority of what's happening or a small aspect of it as a whole, that we should call it out. We should draw attention to it. To be able to say that, no, we don't want this. And if we can't do that, that means that it's fallen to people on the opposite sides to criticise us. And then we don't listen to the opposite side that criticises us because they're the opposite side. Surely in itself, we should take, as adults, the hard look at ourselves and realise that when we have people like this that are representing supposedly the idea of freedom and democracy or Republican uh, Constitution, sorry, Republic Constitution, then surely it would actually be necessary to point this stuff out, to actually show that, yeah, this thing's happen, but we don't support it. He can run as an independent. We're not going to stop and get rid of his platform to be consistent on the idea of freedom of speech. But we don't have to platform him. I just think that we need to take a harder look at ourselves and criticise ourselves more and actually listen to other people that do criticise us rather than just thinking they have an ulterior motive. Which, sure, they probably do as it's an opposite side and it's one versus the other in most aspects. But can't we actually criticise ourselves? And if we can't criticise ourselves, how do we learn? And how do we self-learn? And how do we grow? I know that sounds a bit self-helpy. Maybe because it's, it is a little bit self-helpy. But it's true though. If you can't criticise yourself as your harsh and most dedicated critic, then you're never going to get better. So if you support a side, whether it's right or left or centre or 
up or down, then criticize your side the most. That way you can point out that not everybody supports this way and then you can push the extremists out by themselves rather than just saying, well, we disassociate with themselves so we don't talk about them. No, all you're doing is forming a censorship of sorts by not talking about them and doing exactly what you accuse the other side of doing about not talking about an issue because it makes you look bad. Who cares about political point scoring if you're not correct? That's all I'm going to say on that one. And I just think that the issue in itself is a lot more complicated than just the case of, ooh, Republicans are bad and they're homophobic. I don't think that. I don't think that at all. I don't think that the Republicans are that way in, in themselves. I don't. I honestly really don't. But if you have somebody that the Republicans as a ticket for a mayor that has been provably and proven to have said this and in his own way endorsed it by saying that he actually thinks, which you can read in the citations that I provide, that he actually endorses it because he was talking about the idea of a revolution. And if the revolution happened, that's when he would go out and kill them or condone killing them. Again, read the citations. They are in the links down below. That maybe we should call that out. Maybe we should actually show that we don't want that. And if we don't call it out, when other people say that you don't call this out, so you must support it, it kind of correlates. Now, it's not a causation. and I'm not saying people that don't call this out do support this because that's just ridiculously stupid. But if you're constantly calling out the left for their supposed hypocrisies and, and whatnot, then aren't you your own worst hypocrite by not calling out your own side and pointing out that you don't support these aspects when you would moan that somebody on the left that pointed this out would conflate it and say that it's the whole of the Republicans that do this. I'm not doing that, by the way. I am saying that not all Republicans think this. I would say majority of Republicans don't think this. But maybe call it out so people that do think that, do think that Republicans are like this way, can provably be wrong by it. That's all I'm saying. Let me know what you think down below. Let me let me know if you think that I'm going way off the rails here or if you think I've got a point. Let me know down below. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, and however you may identify, I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. And I will speak to you all again very soon. Again, sorry about the length of the video uh, since doing my last video. But thank you for supporting me in any way which you can. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe or whatever you want to. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye for now. Take care.